Welcome. You're going to resonate in today's five contests. Let's discuss with Sean Spicer, chief strategist and communications director for the RNC. Always good to see you, good my morning. friend. Good morning. So, the word rigged, as it passed through Donald Trump's lips, I watched you wince. You do not like that word. You feel it is inaccurate and wrong because... Because it's, it's a system that we've used since 1856. The delegates of our party, uh, who are elected by the grassroots from coast to coast through all the territories, um, are chosen. They're able to choose the nominee, the rules that we abide by, the platform. Um, so it may be a complicated system, but it's a grassroots system. It's a democratic system that recognizes the various different states and territories can craft a, uh, a primary, a convention, or a caucus, whatever is best to them. It's not a Washington top-down system. The, the Democrats, frankly, have a much more Washington-based center uh, system. I think that's wrong. I think that the way we do it recognizes the different states and territories have, have But this is a bipartisan blowback, right? You have the Democrats with their superdelegates and who are they and what do they really do and is the proportion out of sorts and, and mitigating the common vote. Uh, on your side, it's even if it's not rigged, even if it's not done by design specifically to thwart Trump or anybody else, the rules themselves are so confusing. Just Connecticut. They're not that confusing. Con listen to Connecticut. Not to you. You're very right. smart. But to people like me, it can be very confusing. Connecticut primary. Hybrid. Proportional statewide. 20% threshold. 50% winner-take-all trigger for 13 statewide delegates. Winner-take-all by district. 15 district delegates. This is a complex system. Sure. People will point to it and say, by design, to let the insiders get but, okay, what they so, want. Okay, fair point. But look, look at who's leading right now on our side. Ted Trump. Cruz and, and Donald Trump, two folks that you would never call insiders in Washington, two folks that nobody at the beginning of this race said that the establishment was picking. So when you look at the outcome, it's exactly the opposite of what's being accused of. So I would argue that the system is very fair. It, 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 right now, the two individuals that have gotten the most votes have the most delegates. You have a guy like Donald Trump who's gotten about 35, 36 percent of the vote and has about 45, 46 percent of the delegates. It actually has worked in his favor. So and by the way, look, look where we are today. As a guy who grew up in Rhode Island, the idea that we're having a primary in Rhode Island that matters on both sides shows you that the system right now is bringing in more voters, more states than ever before. In 2008, when I voted in Virginia, the race was over. Mm -hmm. It was a civics you know, a lesson to go out and just check the box. You were just exercising voters. the franchise. Exactly. But now it's but definitely now relevant. But now you're seeing all these states. We're going to go till June 7th. Every state and territory in America is going to participate in the Republican process to help choose our nominees. Trump and the other outsiders, to call them that, argue that's happening despite the system, not because of it. And then he'll point to specifically Trump and his supporters. Look at this alliance. Now, he'll call it collusion. Right. By definition, it isn't, because collusion is secretive. This is out in the open. And collusion is usually to do something that is wrong slash illegal. And this is not illegal. But do you endorse this combination of Kasich and Cruz for the sole effort of keeping Trump from getting delegates. Well, first of all, we don't, and I know you've heard me say this before, we don't endorse anything. Trump our job, our job, that our this job, is being fed through the system. I, I understand this, but this was a system that was set up years ago, so the idea that we were that, for, you know, thought that how far ahead. No, that but we actually these two cracked. guys combining, did you want them to do this? We don't want anything. What I want is to have the best nominee that's going to win in November. That's it, plain and simple. I want conservative values restored. I want to have a president that take, tackles the debt, instills a pro-life. But two combining against one, does that sound no, right? That's not what I want. What I want is every candidate to run the best race possible, to have a fair and open and transparent process, where at the end, two of the individuals who won't win, because by definition, two right. of them can't, is that they walk away and say, I didn't win, but it was fair. That's all I want, and us to be unified as a party and say, I went in with as much passion for my guy as possible. We lost. It was fair. Let's unite and beat Hillary Clinton. Now, we've known each other a long time, but I remember when I came here, we met, we met here with the organizations, and you were trying to sell us at the convention. Don't undersell that convention coverage. You know, you guys, you try to skimp during the conventions. Right. Don't do it. And we were like, yeah, yeah, we'll be at the convention. <laughs> you're like, hey. <laughs> but could you have ever imagined that your convention would be bringing to a head this process in a way that certainly hasn't happened in our lifetime, right. including 1976. It wasn't like this. I think we're go it is going to be an amazing piece of history no matter what. Right now, you look at the eyes of the world, not just the country, are going to be on Cleveland this year. And I think we're going to put on a world-class event that people are going to be proud of. I really mean that because it's not just what's going to come out. The city of Cleveland, which is a largely democratic city, is so proud 
to host this convention and put their city on the spot. But more than that, the people that we have there running it are the best in the business. They are going to put on a convention that shows how democracy works. Every vote's going to be seen live on television. The process, people are going to learn a lot about how this process works. And I think at the end of it, they're going to see a united party that has the solutions that are going to move, this, move our party into the White House in November. You think the rules are going to change, that the party is going to suggest at this convention, hey, we've got to do things a little bit differently? There's, there's too much disparity among the states. There's too many different layers of voting and how you get delegates? Well, I think what we're going to do is the 2016 delegates are going to pass rules for the 2016 convention. I don't know what they're going to do, but I, I don't see some dramatic shift in what's going to happen. Ultimately, it's up to them. But our party, look, when you look at what's going on in our party versus theirs, in the state of Rhode Island, which I mentioned today, you have the Democratic governor, Gina Raimondo, mm -hmm. closing 67 percent of the polling places. It's, you know, for all of the heat that our party takes, their party's doing. They're closing polling places, making it harder for people in Rhode Island to vote. I think that's wrong. I think what you're going to see in our party is a party that wants to bring people in, wants to grow, wants to talk about opportunity, entrepreneurship, how to make families better, how to give people more prosperity. Sean Spicer, thank you for being on New Day. I know thank it is you. tricky for you. Politically, you want it to be fair, you want it to be up and up, but football fan-wise, you like to go with Tom Brady and the Patriots, well, he is and America's they're not really quarterback. known he, for look, that. Look, you New Yorkers want to attack America's team, America's quarterback. Listen, it's just sad. I'm not into attacking. I don't want to deflate your hopes for the football <laughs> season. Sean Spicer, thank Let you very much. Let science be your guide. <laughs> wow. That, that, I didn't see that.